Hello and welcome back to another Let's Play of XCOM 2. My name is Saiken and today we're going to look into the legendary Iron Man exquisite timing run. Uh, lots of you, a lot of you uh, were asking for that run and I'm happy to oblige. We're uh, going to try to do the exquisite timing achievement for XCOM 2 for those of you who don't know it. It's essentially asking you to finish the game on Commander or higher difficulty uh, prior to July 1st. Uh, starting in March, it means you have March, um, April, um, May and June as month to complete uh, the game and you got to go all the way through it. I'll try to do it on Legendary Iron Man uh, without kind of modifying um, and reloading the game uh, seat until we got a perfect um, kind of start to finish. So it's going to be a realistic run of um, basically a random uh, start. Uh, that's number one. Number two is we're going to do it in War of the Chosen, making it potentially even more level as you cannot deal with the Chosen at all and basically got to ignore them. So they will appear in the last mission if we make it uh, that far. And number three is um, I'm going to play it completely modless, so no help uh, from uh, my side to even... Um, get a bit of a speed up or in, improve the power of um, our squad. It's ba it's the basic game. It's um, basically the hardest difficulty, no reloads, nothing. Just trying to somewhat uh, do uh, the achievement. Now, I gotta say, when I was researching the achievement before we jump in, it seems uh, that no one has done it on Legendary, uh, meaning there's uh, very real poten uh, uh, potential that it is um, impossible because Legendary doubles all of your research times. So we're probably going to go in and just to manage expectations, we're only and only going to do the Golden Path um, and we'll focus completely on that. So probably not even magnetic weapons, no armor upgrades, nothing. Potentially not even a squad upgrade. So um, maybe I need to four man the entire run with ballistic weapons and basically just rushing through it. I have read up on um, the Golden Pass and a couple of things that others were using, but I, I flat out think that some of the tips uh, that might work on lower difficulties will not be um, so valuable within that run. So I'm going to come up with my own strategy and we'll just play it by ear. If it doesn't work, um, it's at least um, an attempt to kind of speed run the game as fast as possible on the highest difficulty. Probably if I would be doing it over and over and over, uh, I could even squeeze out maybe 10-20% more. Um, but that's, uh, that's about it. So without further ado, let's start on a legendary. We're going to toggle on as advanced options that we're definitely going to start with the Reapers. Um, they do have the best resistance orders. I'm hoping for some of the time improve, uh, improving resistance orders. The best here would be resistance network, which allows us to contact um, new areas instantly. That would be a real game winner. Between the eyes um, to instantly kill losts uh, is certainly a good one as well. And just to make it a little bit more punishing, we're going to put in Grim Horizon, uh, making all dark events uh, permanent, because why not? If you're screwing yourself, then you might as well do it correctly. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Uh, we're not um, taking any other options. Uh, let's enable Iron Man and uh, for War of the Chosen, um, we are going to disable the Lost and Abandoned mission, which means we're immediately starting uh, with the Reaper. Um, that is simply due to you not wanting to see me do the mission for the 1500th time in a row. And we're, of course, uh, using all of the integrated uh, content. Um, Shenzla's Gift and Alien Hunters are up and able to buy default. So let's jump right into the beloved Gatecrasher mission and see how well we're doing. All right, here we go. Let's see what our team uh, looks like. Uh, first and foremost, we do have a Reaper. Um, his name is Wrath. The reason why we do have a Reaper is because we use the second wave option to start with the Reapers. It has advantages and disadvantages. Uh, the disadvantage of not doing the Lost mission is uh, that you basically skip a very simple mission uh, that could 
upgrade your team substantially um, and in return get the Reaper right away from the start. Kind of an even trade. Uh, we do have Haywired here as uh, one of our soldiers, uh, super good uh, soldier in our Long War of the Chosen campaign. Um, Mr. Ivor Divert has joined us. Welcome to the teammate. And finally, Rabbit, uh, Jessica Rabbit, uh, one of the, our newer viewers. Uh, so uh, let's kick it off. I'm excited to see a couple of new faces, um, although I'm already missing my standard crew. Anyways, uh, let's uh, go ahead. We simply need to plant the C4 and kill everyone. It's pretty straightforward. Having a Reaper will make the exercise a tiny bit easier um, compared to the normal engagement. All right, let's uh, aggressively move with our Reaper over to here. Good, we already know that uh, these are two out of three packs. Um, seeing the high ground here, I will decide that we're going to uh, stay here. Um, unfortunately, there is no second floor elsewhere. Is that here? Um, the balcony is no good, but if there would be a second floor, it uh, would be an excellent building. We are in concealment, so let's double move and get ourselves up the first um, rooftop here and we're going to take it from there let's speak a bit about exquisite timing whilst i'm setting it up so exquisite timing uh, really makes for a bit of a different uh, i would say a way of approaching and playing the game first and foremost uh, you are uh, way more um, yeah, compelled to uh, to finish things fast within uh, that achievement, logically, because elsewise you would fail it. Secondly, what I like about the achievement is it uh, offers complete new kind of meta game uh, because some of the things that are uh, very powerful and potent in the normal game um, might not even be available uh, to you. So that's a great and refreshing achievement. I've never played it, to be honest, uh, or I've never completed it yet, um, because it normally requires you to go and play on Commander difficulty, and truth be told, I've never played on Commander difficulty so far. Not saying that that is uh, something that I despise or anything, but it was never tr truly appealing to me. Um, so, in terms of starting this pack, the Claymore would definitely kill them if we were to go for it. I would actually want to keep the Claymore for, um, for the pack with the Advent um, Captain. So maybe we can sneak our way up to the Advent Captain and trigger that pack, kind of leaving them alone. As long as we're using the Claymore, there's really not that much we need to be afraid of. So we know that the Advent Captain is kind of behind here, meaning if we're moving all the way up to here, that should not trigger anything. We certainly should um, make sure that we're killing the advent, um, the advent officer regularly, because we will need his corpse uh, for our research. Can't just explode him, because then we would be losing the corpse. But we can injure uh, injure him, and then just take him out. So claimer it is. And that should do it. There we go. Two down, Advent Officer triggered, but not yet down. And no one has lost their 
concealment. Meaning we're just going to stay on Overwatch for now, waiting for this pack here to either move in or move away. Even better, they have now clustered up. Well, look at that. We could um, certainly move up. They don't know that the Reaper is here. Not yet. Um, I would absolutely love to throw a grenade in here, but I just mentioned how valuable the corpse of uh, the commander uh, is, so the advent, uh, the advent officer, that is. Maybe we can move a bit closer and just wait for them to regroup in a bit different fashion. Yeah, see that is that is a regrouping that works for us. Because now we can hit potentially hit three of them. Yes, there we go. So that's a good start. I guess we're... Shall we do an Overwatch? You know what? We're going to do one Overwatch. Um, one Overwatch. The first one moving is the Officer, so he should take the Overwatch shot, essentially, um, meaning we have a high chance to kill him. And all three of them should be devastatingly injured. Perfect. Killed one, which is great. There's always a 33% chance to um, to kill someone. Overwatch was hitting quite well. Got our promotion. One guy is burning. That's uh, good as well. Which means the only uh, person, the, um, the officer, by the way, bugged out and essentially just decided to stand there. Good. We're going to let the flames uh, do the rest mainly because we can keep um, Ratha's concealment and what I would want to do is yeah basically just overwatch for now there we go very solid first engagement haven't lost a single um, have, have not even been injured and we've only lost our consumables so far which is fair so that's the last pack right there given where we are let's move a little bit closer We can start um, to uh, basically move in and plant the C4, which should motivate both of them to come a bit closer, because uh, the AI knows when the C4 is planted. This here should not trigger them yet. Right, just barely out of line of sight. Putting ourselves in full cover with every single one of our operators. Pretty sure the enemy is not going to move at all. I guess the real question now is, yeah, that is that would trigger them. Are they going to move into us? Maybe, probably not one of those situations where you continue to overwatch and they're just going to stand there.
so this year all of all of these fields except the last one would not give our position away because uh, this big um, piece of cover would protect us let's position ourselves up here that's a good starting point for next round to just take them out we could um, we could go back into shadows I mean technically what we could try to do is this here is 100% um, chance to hit him and a very likely um, hit and it's a 50-50 chance to be revealed so might not be the worst idea to do that the sectoid to begin with isn't isn't really going to do much he will probably use his mind spin and that's about it um, and there's a 50 percent chance that we're not even going to be revealed so might as well try to do that of course minimum damage no crit and reveal yeah exactly Worst case scenario, right there. But that's fine. Always got a plan for the worst, worst, worst case scenarios. Good. we can position ourselves up here simply because that piece of cover will protect our position and we can start chipping away on uh, the sector he's very much in a flank uh, flank position and although all of this is only half cover it's mitigated by the fact that we do have flanking shots on the sector. Unfortunately, we couldn't reach the advent soldier, who's now the only one uh, left alive. We're probably going to take a shot, and although it's half cover, ah, that was clever. He basically outran that piece of cover. My bad for not uh, being thorough enough. On we will get. Uh, we will need to deal with a heavily injured operative, but that's okay. Area is secure. We're not picking up any inbound contacts. Scanners are clear. Minus one five. We have a limited window to act. Before what are we getting? An advanced stock. Yeah. Could have been a bit better loot, I suppose, and could have been a bit cleaner. The rest of the mission was fine. Good. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Gatecrasher in a nutshell. Bit of a different Gatecrasher this time. Which is probably why you are not getting squaddies normally to begin with, because it makes the mission quite a little bit more simplistic. But we got our team, and that's gotta do. Let's jump into the actual strategic layer. Alright, we landed back at our home base. Let's take a swift look. Everyone got a promotion. 28 days gravely wounded, meaning effectively the first month for Rabbit is gone. Uh, it's very likely that she's not going to see action um, at all uh, due to this. We got Haywired as our specialist. Very, very good. If I could select a class blindly, that would be my first pick. Got a Sniper, Divot. Congratulations, mate. Um, that's a super nice um, uh, pick together uh, with um, 
uh, Wrath, and we're not going to promote uh, Rabbit because the first four promotions that you get are the first four classes, and I don't want to waste Assault or Grenadier for someone who's maybe not seeing action at all. Good, we got our Advent Officer Corpse that's important and an advanced stock, which isn't bad either. Let's Shortly look into our armory and uh, first of all color code uh, the soldiers and then uh, take a look at who else is there. Good, we got everyone color coded. Now let's take a look who else is there. So we got Sane. Um, that is Tracy Elliott as a potential candidate. We got Quick Feet, uh, who uh, was a specialist in our long war run as well. Welcome to the team, and we got Mike the Public Bravo, um, who joined us as well. I think that is it from the character pool. The rest are uh, rookies, so that's the cast. No one of the core original team, so maybe the narrative of the story is this is an alternate, uh, alternate universe where the newcomers need to complete it as soon as possible. I like that hook. So let's talk a bit about the strategy layer and how that will work. Uh, we only got one, um, essentially one uh, building uh, slot. And let's shortly talk about the options that we do have. Resistance ring certainly is one of the best options to begin with. Um, in a normal game, uh, it just is incredibly cost efficient. It also allows you to do the covert ops mission, so it's just all the way good. And it's probably also going to be one of our top picks. Training center, not relevant for this run, mainly because it is a slow building. It is good, don't get me wrong. Bonds are good, uh, mm, uh, purchasing extra quirks are good, but we, we cannot deal with that here. Laboratories uh, is the far opposite to what we need at the moment. Uh, not only a build time of 40 days, which uh, essentially means once you have built it, half of the run is already over. Secondly, um, it's just going to slow you down so much. GTS could be a thing, um, uh, specifically for upgrading your squad. Uh, the problem with uh, GTS, though, is we are yeah, very likely not going to have the money or time to uh, to go through that. So essentially what we're going to do to not waste money is we're going to start with the resistance ring. And the very next building that we're going to do is, um, is uh, going to um, allow us to build the skull jack. Uh, so we, we need to make sure that those two core buildings are in place. Um, since they only take a limited amount of energy, we're fine for now. We clearly don't have engineers. If we had a perfect run or with a good game seed, we would get an, an, an engineer in our first scanning. I don't think that that's going to happen. Uh, so it's probably all going to take a little bit longer. Now, in terms of um, the research that we can do here, um, we're starting with Alien Biotech. Uh, to start the uh, uh, to to start the uh, uh, autopsies on the uh, captain, so that's probably going to be number one. Um, secondly, is maybe modular uh, weapons, but that'll be a stretch. So were you going with alien biotech and then all the way through the essential research tree? All right, I was tempted for a moment to maybe uh, use a, a research tree uh, and show kind of the path. Unfortunately, most of the research trees are just more confusing than they uh, would be helping for the sake of the argumentation. Essentially, we're sticking with alien biotech here and trying to get uh, the um, captain as soon as possible. Then we would transition into getting proving grounds to complete the skull jack. And from there, I would be hoping uh, that we can get um, a Codex as soon as possible, as well as getting the Black Side mission done. So, Alien Biotech it is. Pretty different than you would normally start. From an engineering standpoint, we're currently not building any items. Money is tight, and we will need to use just the base equipment for now. Um, yeah, we got our soldiers under control. That's fine. So let's jump into the journey that XCOM 2 
uh, holds ahead. So far, I was the absolute core standard. Um, as we're progressing now, things might be a little different. So this is where the beautiful randomness comes in. The timer down here in the bottom is exactly the one that you need to be afraid of. Let's take a look. New factions, resistance rising, scavengers, and... Resistance Rising, I think, gave you an additional bonus um, for uh, for mission rewards and scavengers. Um, I think was immediate collection of um, rewards at the end of the month. That's not too bad. So let's take a look what we can and cannot do. We could gain, uh, go for some intel. Uh, we're probably resource starved so we first of all got to get our supplies in uh, balance and whenever we can we're um, going for some intel one of the crucial aspects here is going to be we're sticking with one region because uh, many of uh, the uh, missions are from the golden path will spawn between two and three blips away from your core region so if we expand uh, needlessly we might uh, be in deep trouble for not having enough um, yeah, supplies uh, to even go to the uh, target locations. So let's hope that the spawns are somewhat moderate for us. We're rushing deeply into March already and got ourselves 50-ish uh, supplies. We got a couple of rookies. We don't really need them. I would be tempted to uh, to go there and do it. This is, by the way, some of the worst spawn that we could get. Um, this could have been an engineer or a scientist. Uh, likewise, the first one could have been an engineer or a scientist. So already the, uh, the run uh, potentially um, starts out very slow. So instead, we're going to go for Intel. We have enough rookies as is. And there is our first target. Luckily, the game uh, here gi uh, would give us an engineer. It's Operation Broken Sleep. So what we would be doing is we'd be going in there with our core team and would be trying to uh, put two further rookies uh, through it. Um, so I'm trying to go in with a sniper um, and the specialist plus two rookies, and that'll be it. I, that's um, all we have. Uh, that way we would gain at least another Grenadier and an Assault, um, making a pretty solid, or uh, rounding up a pretty solid core roster. Uh, if we are really running it with only four people, I would probably go for a Reaper instead of the um, Assault or a Reaper instead of the Sniper, depending on who levels faster. Uh, so uh, that's just how the general setup uh, for us would uh, work. And yeah, that's really the end of uh, session number one. Um, if you are enjoying uh, the run, please feel free to leave a comment down below. That always gets me hyped up, plus it helps the video um, to um, show it to other people on YouTube. Secondly, uh, you might want to subscribe to the channel if you haven't uh, done so. And as always, if you want to be in uh, the roster, uh, the very first video of every single run is a perfect option to ask for recruitment. I will get your, um, I will get your personal soldier into our character pool that is hopefully growing over time and we're starting to run with them. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. And take care. Bye-bye.